Throughout history, instances abound where our limited understanding of natural systems prompted questionable interventions, resulting in unintended and occasionally calamitous outcomes. The intricacies of nature form a labyrinth that humanity has only just begun to explore, and at times, our efforts to decipher it have only led to further entanglement. Whether triggering structural failures or sparking conflicts like the infamous Emu Wars, here are ten occasions when human attempts to manipulate nature ended up producing adverse consequences. 1. Operation Cat Drop In the early 1950s, confronted with a malaria outbreak in Borneo, the World Health Organization, who took the initiative to combat the disease by spraying the island with the potent insecticide DDT. While effectively eliminating the disease-carrying mosquitoes, this intervention set in motion a series of disastrous and unforeseen consequences. DDT, being a broad-spectrum poison, inadvertently wiped out parasitic wasps that served as natural predators for thatch-eating caterpillars. With the absence of these wasps, the caterpillar population surged, leading to widespread damage to people's roofs and, ultimately, the sudden collapse of structures. The repercussions extended further as the insecticide ascended the food chain. Dickos, having ingested the poisoned insects, became a toxic food source for cats. As the cats succumbed to the effects of DDT, the rat population burgeoned. The proliferating rats became carriers of diseases such as typhus and plague, triggering outbreaks across the island. In a bid to address the escalating issues in 1960, the WHO initiated Operation Cat Drop a unique intervention involving the airborne delivery of cats to Borneo. While reports vary on the number of cats dropped, with some stating 14,000 and others suggesting 23, the operation aimed to restore balance to the ecosystem and mitigate the problems inadvertently spawned by the initial DDT intervention. 2. The Emu War Upon their return from World War I, Australian veterans were granted land in Western Australia by the government for farming endeavors. Initially modest, these holdings took on new significance during the onset of the Great Depression in 1929, prompting the landowners to expand their wheat production. However, in October 1932, farmers already grappling with plummeting wheat prices faced an unexpected threat to their livelihoods. Hordes of emus, large flightless birds native to the outback, akin in appearance to ostriches, Dromaeus nova Hollandii, descended upon their crops, wreaking havoc by trampling and devouring the fields. The emus, migrating southwest after breeding in May and June, found the wheat fields to be a suitable habitat with abundant food and a reliable water source. Recognizing the severity of the damage by November, the Minister of Defense authorized soldiers to wage war against the emus. The conflict, officially dubbed the Emu War, commenced with the military facing a 50-strong emu flock on the first day. Despite employing machine gun fire, the soldiers found their efforts largely ineffective as the agile birds skillfully evaded the barrage, scattering and dodging bullets. Six days later, with only a dozen emu casualties, the war was declared a lost cause, leading the soldiers to return home. Major Meredith, the leader of the troops, was quoted in a 1953 newspaper article, noting that the emus exhibited an O invulnerability of tanks O in the face of machine guns. 3. Chasing Rat Tails in 1902, when rats infested homes and propagated the plague in Hanoi, French colonialists took action to address the city's rodent issue. The residents of what is now Vietnam's capital were mobilized to venture into the sewers and combat the rats, initially yielding significant results. In an effort to boost the extermination campaign and foster entrepreneurialism, French authorities introduced a bounty of one piaster, the currency used in French Indochina between 1887 and 1952 for every rat killed. Individuals could claim the reward by presenting rat tails as evidence of their successful elimination. However, as the daily rat death toll soared into the tens of thousands, officials observed an unusual surge in tailless rats scurrying through the city. Despite the accumulating piles of tails, there appeared to be no reduction in the overall rat population. It became evident that people were releasing tail amputated rats to allow them to reproduce, creating more opportunities for financial gain. Health officials also uncovered rat breeding operations in the outskirts of the city. Eventually, recognizing the flaw in the system, the French authorities abandoned the bounty program. Unfortunately, the unchecked rat population led to a bubonic plague outbreak in 1906, resulting in 263 deaths. 4. Indestructible Starfish The threatened coral reef ecosystems in the Indo-Pacific face a formidable threat from one of their natural predators capable of devastating entire reefs within months. 
The crown of thorn starfish, Acanthister plantsy, can grow up to 31 inches, 80 centimeters, in diameter, boasting up to 21 arms adorned with numerous toxic thorns. Employing a unique feeding method, these starfish invert their stomachs, extending them outside their mouths to consume coral skeletons by sucking off the tissue. In misguided attempts to combat the starfish, some individuals resorted to chopping them into pieces, overlooking the starfish's ability to regenerate body parts, inadvertently exacerbating their proliferation. Other efforts involved injecting the creatures with toxic substances, inadvertently inducing them to spawn and release thousands of sperm and eggs into the surrounding water. Oceana recommends a more effective approach, advocating for the removal of the starfish from the reef to mitigate their impact. 5. A 100-Year-Old Miscalculation the Colorado River serves as a vital water source for over 40 million people across seven U.S. states. However, in recent decades, it has experienced a significant reduction, attributed partly to climate change and partly to a century-old miscalculation. In 1922, the states of Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming allocated the Colorado River's water supply among themselves. Unfortunately, their calculation of the river's annual flow originated from an unusually wet period and was never adjusted, resulting in the states assigning themselves larger water allocations than the river could sustain in typical conditions. Over the span of a century, this oversight in the political decision-making process has led to a 20% decrease in the Colorado River's flow, contributing to record low water levels in the Hoover Dam Reservoir and Lake Powell, which stand as the two largest reservoirs in the United States. 6. Cane Toad Bonanza Towards the close of the 19th century, Australia's emerging sugarcane industry faced a significant challenge. Indigenous beetles had developed a preference for the crops introduced a century earlier, causing substantial losses by consuming the roots. In an attempt to address the issue, entomologists learned of the purported success of the American toad, Rinella marina, formerly Bufo marinus, in controlling cane beetle populations in Puerto Rico. In 1935, after importing a breeding population from Hawaii, scientists released 2,400 toads into the Gordonvale area of Queensland. However, they neglected to verify whether the toads actually consumed cane beetles and, as noted by the National Museum of Australia, failed to assess potential environmental impacts. Despite the release of the toads, cane beetle populations remained stable, and the pests continued to devastate sugarcane plantations. Concurrently, the population of cane toads surged spreading from Queensland to coastal New South Wales, the Northern Territory, and parts of northwestern Australia. Cane toads secrete venom that can be lethal to animals consuming them, leading to declines in native predators, including the endangered northern quals, Dasiurus halicatus, and causing significant harm to ecosystems. Even today, the invasive toads persist in wreaking havoc. The Australian government acknowledges on its website that there is unlikely to be a comprehensive method available for controlling cane toads across Australia. 7. Underground Inferno In May 1962, a fire ignited in the small borough of Centralia, Pennsylvania, reportedly starting as a deliberate burning of residential trash in an abandoned mine. Despite several attempts to quell the flames with water over the following days, the fire persisted, burning through August. Concerned about a potential mine fire, the council alerted local coal companies and state mine inspectors. Situated above a network of abandoned coal mines, Centralia faced the possibility that an unsealed opening in the trash pit had ignited the subterranean coal seams. Remarkably, these fires persist to this day. By the 1980s, both federal and state governments abandoned efforts to combat the flames, choosing instead to relocate residents. The enduring underground inferno has transformed the town, baking the ground, turning trees white, and causing fissures that release harmful gases. Centralia now exists as a desolate grid of streets, with only a few individuals who opted not to leave. It could take another 250 years before the coal sustaining the underground fire is depleted. 8. Electrocuting Fish Imported to the U.S. in the 1970s as a solution to combat algal blooms in water treatment plants and aquaculture ponds, Asian carp quickly escaped confinement and infiltrated rivers and streams. Some species of these carp are capable of leaping over low dams and surmounting barriers and waterways, making them invasive and disruptive to fishing activities. The spread of carp has reached the Mississippi River and its tributaries, and there is a looming threat of their entry into the Great Lakes. This potential invasion poses a significant risk of ecological disruption and could severely impact the $7 billion annual fishing industry. 
As a preemptive measure, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers installed an underwater electric barrier in Chicago's waterway system in 2013. The barrier operates by stunning fish swimming upstream, causing their limp bodies to drift back downstream. While it has seemingly succeeded in keeping carp at bay thus far, there are concerns about its complete reliability, as it may allow small fish to bypass the barrier. 9. Smash Sparrows During Mao Zedong's leadership from 1949 to 1976, China underwent an unprecedented industrial transformation. The slogan, Man Must Conquer Nature, resonated strongly during the Great Leap Forward, a radical socio-economic initiative aimed at surpassing Britain in production and realizing Mao's vision of communism. In 1958, as part of this initiative, Mao initiated the Four Pests at Campaign, urging the populace to eliminate flies, mosquitoes, rats, and sparrows. Mao believed that sparrows were reducing crop yields by consuming grain, leading to a directive to shoot them, destroy their nests, and eliminate survivors by creating noise until they succumb to exhaustion. As sparrow populations dwindled nationwide, their natural predators proliferated. Locusts surged and crop-eating insects multiplied. Alongside other adverse consequences of Mao's environmental policies, such as widespread deforestation and pesticide use, the Smash Sparrow a campaign played a role in a catastrophic famine that claimed the lives of tens of millions of people. 10. Flushed Away For seven millennia, the Mississippi River has transported sediment from various regions of North America, depositing it into the Gulf of Mexico. This process resulted in the formation of lobes of land interspersed with swampy water channels, creating the renowned River Delta and its marshes. However, in 1718, French colonists establishing New Orleans on a strip of land beside the main channel of the Mississippi faced challenges during spring floods, which inundated half-finished structures. To address this, they initiated the construction of levees, earth mounds designed to serve as barriers, safeguarding the city from flooding. Over time, the proliferation of levees extended thousands of miles north into Missouri. While these structures facilitated the growth of cities and farmland, they also channeled the river into a singular force. In the past, the Mississippi naturally replenished soils by creating marshlands, but the levee system directs the river straight into the Gulf, depositing sediments into the deep sea. Consequently, Louisiana has lost over 2,000 square miles. 5,200 square kilometers of land to the ocean since the 1930s, an area equivalent to a football field sinking every 100 minutes. The diminishing wetlands exacerbate the impact of storms and hurricanes on coastal communities. Coupled with rising sea levels, land loss poses a threat to Louisiana's commercial fishing industry, constituting 30% of the U.S. annual catch, five major ports, and diverse wetland ecosystems. Thank you for embarking on this journey through the intricate tapestry of human interactions with the natural world. If you found these stories of unintended consequences thought-provoking, don't forget to hit that like button and share your reflections in the comments below. For more explorations into the complex relationship between humanity and nature, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Your support allows us to continue unraveling the mysteries of our shared environment. Ring that notification bell to stay updated on our upcoming content. As we navigate the labyrinth of our understanding, let's stay connected on this fascinating voyage of discovery. Until next time, remember to appreciate the complexity of nature and the lessons it teaches us. Stay curious, stay informed, and take care.